Hi guys, today I'm going to continue with my descriptions of my favorite WordPress plugins and today we're going to start it off with the featured content tool you see right here. I'm going to go completely through how to make your own. Here, it'll list of all the plugins. If you've been watching all of the different videos I put together here, some of them you uh, see me install before. The one I'm going to show you how it works today is called Dynamic Content Gallery and I'm just going to jump right into it. Click on settings. Obviously I installed and hit it to activate. Okay, I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you what I do because I think this is the best way to do it and I think it's whenever there's numerous different options and ways to do things I think it's better to just say okay do it this way. If you don't like the way I do it, sorry. I'm just trying to help you out here. Okay, under image file management you want to click on full URL. Down here under gallery method you want to click on pages because what you're going to do is you're going to feature pages on your website. Since you have pages selected, you're not going to have to put any information in multi-option or one category, so skip over both of those. And this is how you add content to your website. What you do is you simply put all of your page ID numbers separated by a comma with no spaces between them right here. Then right here, you would put a default photograph that would show up in your featured content area what if you forgot to put an image in this area. So let me explain some things. Page ID numbers and your uh, photographs. Where are they? Go back up here. Pages. Just click on Pages, Edit in your left sidebar. And if you, it's going to be hard for you to see, but I'll try doing it down here. If you put your mouse over top of one of your pages, see the 281? that is your page ID number. So that, that's the code that you would enter into the Dynamic Content Gallery. Now, where is your content located? In your media library, it's the best place to store all of your information. So what I'm gonna to need to do here is I have an article on subliminal marketing. I'm gonna click on that, and then select and copy and paste this. Then what I wanna do is jump over back into Pages Edit, find my subliminal marketing article, which is right here, click edit, and I'm gonna show you exactly where to paste that information. See right here where it says dfcg-image? You would paste it right there. Or, or inclusive, you could paste it over here in this box, dynamic content gallery. You see it in both places. And that's basically all you need to do. You need your ID number. You can also see there's a post right here. I'm going to jump back over into my plugins and continue describing everything to you. Dynamic Content Gallery, click on Settings. I think this is the best tool. I'm sorry if anybody else made a featured content tool. So you can see back here, there's 1112. That was the post ID. And here is a default image. You see here I have 645 by 400. I think this is good practice to put the dimensions of your photographs into the names. Now, we're going to slide down through here. I prefer auto, number, number of characters to uh, display in this slide pane description. You can see here, you're, I'm defining the gallery width, 645, 645 pixels. Gallery height, 400 pixels. Gallery uh, border width, I chose not to have one. And then you can choose the font size, you can choose the font color, you can choose almost anything. And that's what I think is so great about this tool. It's just dynamite. Whenever you come down to the Select JavaScript framework, you want to make sure you click on Moo Tools. The reason why is I've had some plugins have problems with the feature content gallery I have here, the dynamic content gallery, in regards to conflicts with jQuery. Show carousel. This is you can decide what you want the title of your content gallery to be, uh, where you want it to be displayed, home page only. All of these great things. I have all those checked. So what's the last thing you want to do here? Well, obviously, where do you paste the featured content uh, links? I'll show you that. You go up here to Appearance. You go to Editor. If This is if you only want your dynamic content gallery to show up only on your first page. So I'm in the Appearance Editor section. I want to come over here, go to Main Index Template, and this is all you have to do cut and paste or type in this code from here to here. 
That's all you need to do, what I just highlighted right there. So you want to go to your main index template, which is right here. You want to find art-content and PHP if have posts and paste it right in the middle of that. Then obviously update file and you're done. So that's the dynamic content gallery. And the next plugin is Intense Debate. You can see it right here. Intense Debate plugin has, the reason I install it, it's been shown to get users to visit your site over and over again. It also dramatically increases the number of comments you receive, helps you figure out who's, uh, which of those commenters have the best reputation, and it's just a nice little tool. So I click Activate. And there we are. So I got Intense Debate activated. Go over here into Settings. Intense Debate. You want to come in here, sign up, log in here, create an account, click on sign up. Da 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 da. We sent an email to provide it. Ba 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 ba. Okay, jump back over here. Type in your user ID and password, and log in. Then what you got to do is you can read all this stuff, but it's all on. So let's just click on Start Importing Comments. Sometimes this takes a long time. I'm obviously going to jump past this whole entire process in the video. Okay, success. In a, it got intense debate all set up for you. That actually takes about two or three minutes for all that to go through. Uh, basically, I keep everything just set up uh, exactly as we have it right here. And then just click on Save Changes. Boom. See? It allows people to log in using an open ID. It allows them to use their intense debate. It allows you to track all kinds of things. Like I said, you can get access to reputations and so forth and so on. And it just seems like users in general like to use this as a commenting system more than some of the other different systems. So if users like it, I like it. And that's intense debate. Okay, now I'm going to go through the last plugin for today series, and it is the Mailchimp plugin. Mailchimp is a newsletter distribution system that is free as long as you don't go over a certain number of subscribers. And I think it's dynamite. It does all kinds of amazing things. If you leave comments below that you want me to show you exactly how to set it up on set up a newsletter system on Mailchimp, I will do so. Basically, how to set up the plugin once you have a newsletter set up is you have to click on the MailChimp setup, which is under your settings. This is after you install and activate. But then right here, you're gonna log in with your MailChimp account. Right here, you're gonna show it which list from MailChimp after it logs you in. You can decide to turn on monkey rewards. I, I have that set up. I have this checked for JavaScript support. Include an unsubscribe link. I had that turned off. This is the header content for the subscription area. This is the name that I want on the button to make sure the person realizes they're subscribing. And this is probably the most important part for you. You can either decide you want a border or not. That's completely up to you. But background color is very important. The reason why is you want it to seamlessly blend in with your uh, website's background. So you want to figure out whatever the background is of your website and change that. Then you decide what you want to have as required. I only require their email address because I just want to disseminate information. And you can have the first name and last name if they choose not to do it. That's great. Then you click Update Subscribe Form Settings. And this is what the MailChimp plugin when it's installed on your system looks like. Right here. Get free newsletter, email address, first name, last name, hit subscribe. Boom. And this is the rest of my website, by the way. This is a really good article. But that's it for today, and I'll see you next time.